he gets in the robot in the first episode. Oh man, this show. The center of a veritable ecosystem of reviews, hot takes, and some of the most diehard fans that can be found out there, myself among them. It has attracted this reputation as this deep, dark chocolate of an anime, which is appreciated only by the truest, most elite anime fan. Which is totally weird if you get your head out of the chocolate hole for a moment, because everyone loves Evangelion, right? They put it on trains and theme parks and underwear and fast food snacks in Japan. It's been translated into a dozen languages and has an active Facebook fan page in all of them. It has achieved this massive vertical penetration that can't just be explained by the opinions of nerds on anime forums. Neon Genesis Evangelion, the official anime of the Coke bottle from The Gods Must Be Crazy. Like, people about to experience Ava, as it is affectionately known, for the first time fret about whether they will be able to understand it or whether you need to have some prior familiarity with anime. Look, it's just like that time I freaked out when I stalled driving the car manual for the first time. I was alone, I didn't have anyone to teach me, and I started working out complicated explanations in my head regarding rotational inertia and precise timing of the use of the clutch. But then it hit me. In most of the world, every idiot manages to learn to drive this way. All those terrible drivers who run red lights or get in road rage fights you see on Reddit, they manage to figure their way around a third pedal, much the same as your ancestors must have succeeded in hiding the sausage. Evangelion is no different. My brain has not been so poisoned by Pocky and late night hentai binges as to think that Japan is some kind of anime paradise. I gather it's not much of a paradise for anyone. But when stripped of the filters of foreignness, yellow subtitles, and or middling text and voice acting, Ava bears more of an audience equivalence to Star Wars than Eraserhead. No! Ava isn't like normie Star Wars, I hear you say. Ava is deep and complex. It has symbolism and subversive elements. You just hate it because you don't understand. Uh, look. Listen, I love Evangelion. It is in my short list of 10 out of 10 anime, and I'm going to explain why in a moment. But I don't get the f why people feel the need to portray their taste as being somehow different and thus superior in kind to others. Oh, it's not a shonen action series with fantastic animation and a good sense of humor. It's a deep dive into the human condition and thus better. Oh, it's not an otaku forward maho shoujo showdown. It's an unexpected subversion of magical girl tropes, and thus makes me engorged. It is seemingly not enough for something to be well-made and engaging. It must somehow overturn the whole meta-narrative. I find this quite unfortunate when it comes to the way that Evangelion is discussed, because it seems like people are overlooking an elegant, simple truth. 1995's Neon Genesis Evangelion is a delicately crafted, beautifully animated, and eminently singular piece of entertainment. A confluence of the unbound creative energy of Studio Gainax, the production firepower of IG, and no small amount of personal and economic hardship produce something that can be enjoyed and understood from innumerable angles and continues to dominate the conversation over 25 years later. Just watch the first few episodes of this series, and I mean really watch them, drink in the complete audiovisual experience. This is not the time to mentally fast forward from subtitle to fan service to subtitle like you might in a bland novel adaptation, oh no. The level of detail, care, and kinetic energy that you will find in every single animation frame, line of dialogue, and camera angle will suck you in. Feast your eyes on the weight and the destruction expressed in the monster action scenes, or how totally wrecked Misato's Renal Alpine gets, and all the exotic, iconic framings of Gendo looking menacing and Shinji getting sandwiched between Onesans. Marvel at the ingenious, out-of-order pacing of the second episode, which keeps you on the edge of your seat through 15 minutes of cool-down and explanation. 
become enamored with characters like Katsuragi Misato and Ayanami Rei, as their every utterance, movement, and piece of clutter in their respective apartments grants greater insight into who they are as people and what they're lacking. There really is something for everyone, as if you're not able to relate to our teenage principals like Shinji and Rei, the adult characters like Ritsuko and Gendo are equally vivid and rich, with enough screen time that they could just as easily be the main characters to project onto and sympathize with. There is so much going on in Evangelion, and so much of it is so good that it can be appreciated at many different levels from many angles, from the visual prima facie to the esoteric writing, the modernist appeals of the designs to the romantic appeals of the directions and characters. It can be watched and enjoyed by Japanese teenagers plopped down in front of the TV, and 27-year-old Brazilian alpha otaku who think anime shit now. It's just like the opening of the series which is memed so heavily, where even if you can't notice that Kaoru appears for two frames, or can't read fast enough to pick up the definition of AT field, you are gripped with the incredible momentum of that damned theme song. Neon Genesis Evangelion, the Honda Civic of anime. This isn't to say there aren't some red herrings or duds. Most famously, perhaps, the crosses and other Abrahamic religious symbols branded all over everything. You're probably best served not reading into these, either in thinking there's some deep Old Testament themes or perceiving that other people perceive Old Testament themes that don't belong and therefore the entire show must be fake, pretentious bullshit. Hmm. As far as anyone can tell, those are all mostly there because Hideaki Anno really likes Devil Man. Also, it's really common for people to talk about how Shinji is somehow highly unusual for an anime protagonist because he's not gung-ho about the whole affair and faces self-doubt and does not get in the fucking robot. Which is a little silly because he's hardly the first young male anime protagonist to reject the call to action, and he definitely isn't the last or most irresponsible. Sixteen years before Evangelion, Amuro Rei spent most of the seminal mecha series whining about getting in the robot and once nearly got everyone killed by leaving and taking the irreplaceable robot with him. Ten years later, Sagara Sosuke would go AWOL in the middle of a mission to find truth inside a 40 and a Chinese prostitute. This seems to be a case where people who don't actually watch much anime are using some platonic boilerplate anime that only exists in YouTube parodies as a point of comparison and couldn't name what show they're actually comparing it to if asked. And this is where we get back to talking about how Neon Genesis Evangelion is perceived, rather than what it is as a product. Because far be it for me to say that people are enjoying something incorrectly, but I definitely think it is possible to advocate or explain something incorrectly. I remember the last time I watched the series. I was with a group of friends in a college dorm, and I think we were pretty deep in, probably episode 17 or 18. Some random person, who I think maybe watched some anime, but not a lot, came in and asked what we were watching and what it was about. My acquaintance who had supported me in setting up this showing, and had a widely known enthusiasm for Evangelion, being able to name every angel from both the series and the rebuilds, and his personal power ranking for them, straightened out his Bitcoin t-shirt and started explaining, Well, you see... Ancient aliens came and seeded the world accidentally and two different two creatures that called seal excavating the black LCL, seed at the North the Pole caused the ice caps and the flooding the world. To like basically destroy humanity because humanity has free will and there's a decision to which level we want to go to. We have free will, so evil's allowed to come and contend, not just good. I crushed my popcorn in my fist. I wish I had shouted, what are you, stupid? though I'm sure I said something less eloquent at the time. I think I tried to talk over him with something along the lines of, it's the biblical apocalypse, these fragile kids have been put in the unenviable position of trying to stop it by piloting giant robots. I realize now that that is also a pretty deficient explanation, though I think it's a lot better than citing the manual to the Japan-only N64 game, and will reach a lot more people than literally Kensuke and the type of people who watch Azure Lane and Konkole. Because again, Evangelion is for, if not everyone, a whole lot of people. Neon Genesis Evangelion The official anime of the market researcher who thinks that the success of Future Diary means that kids want more obnoxious death game anime. Blissfully unaware that it really indicates that young men want to be raped and murdered by a beautiful woman. 
This brings us back around to Evangelion as a piece of media, because it's time to discuss the actual plot of the series and the much more complicated back third of the episodes. The plot of Evangelion, the part with the conspiracies, the prepayant fate of the world with its rituals and intrigues, starts out as a mere sideshow to the much more immediate concerns of fighting monsters and staying sane, but it gradually grows until it encompasses much of episodes 19 through 24. Sometimes the presentation is so clever that you appreciate the subtlety, like how if you pay attention to dialogue and context clues throughout the series, you'll notice that all of the AVA pilot candidates lack something important in common. But the obscure ways that things are presented means you can pretty easily be excused for simply losing track of the circuitous gambits of SEAL, NERVE, the UN, the Japanese government, Gendo Akari, the Akagis, Adam, Lilith, the Far Ancestral Race, the Knights of the Eastern Calculus, the Majestic Twelve, Arby's, the Kwangtung Army, the Bogdanovs, and the 50 Gainax shell companies designed to ratfuck Hideki Anno out of his royalties. The understanding that most people, myself included, managed to build of the plot of Neon Genesis Evangelion comes from reading the wiki. And this is okay, once you realize that the plot is just an amusing sideshow to the story of Evangelion, which is about a handful of very troubled people trying to find themselves and their place in the world under intense pressure. I think Hideki Anno realized this too, which led to the highly unusual final episodes of the series which kick the plot out of the show entirely, and then just interrogates Shinji to the conclusion of his character arc. This sudden change in course disappointed everyone, partly because there's minimal animation for large portions of these episodes, but also because, like for all mystery stories, it's easy to imagine a conclusion to the plot which is way more interesting than anything that could have actually been created. Almost as extensive as the lore of the series is the lore and legend that surrounds the final episodes of the series. With its moments of limited animation and seemingly truncated conclusion, the common saying among the lay weeb is that Studio Gainax ran out of money. Well, it's not quite so simple as that, partly because it's simply not how anime productions work. There's no pot of money being spent freely from beginning to end, nor is there really a strict correlation between quote-unquote animation quality and available funds, when great animation cuts are typically driven by the availability of a single great animator. If you dig into deeper sources, you will find that there were a variety of factors at play, including, but not limited to, the production falling behind schedule because they were forced to change into a more adult time slot early on, Entire later episodes of the show being scrapped in production due to uncomfortable similarities to the Tokyo Metro Sarin attacks which occurred at the time. Hideki Anno and co. finding themselves at a creative impasse on how to properly end the series, with Anno only managing to write the final episodes all too soon before they went to screen. Hideki Anno's deteriorating mental state during the production. And finally, Mismanagement at Studio Gainax that quite likely led to inadequate funds and hang-ups due to non-payments. I will fight you if you suggest that moments like the long wait in the elevator are anything other than totally iconic and a brilliant exercise in dramatic tension. And don't forget, two years later, Gainax dropped one of the greatest anime movies of all time with The End of Evangelion which wraps a belt around the neck of the series and sends it off with a spectacularly animated DEATH ORGASM. You might say that the end of Eva secured the series' legacy, and even in the movie they do seem to frame it as striking back against haters of the original ending. But even just with its 26 original episodes, the footprint of the series is massive. Look, I know that among some anime fans, the 90s are held as this special prelapsarian time for anime, but it's a little more complicated than that. The Japanese economy was in limbo, and while some big manga adaptations did get their start in the early 90s, things seemed to be largely running on fumes from the 80s, with seasons that were largely barren until BAM! Fall of 1995, with Evangelion, Ghost in the Shell, and Memories. And that's really when the floodgates opened for the weird original TV anime that we know today. 
Yes, it took some time for water to spread across the plane, but with how long it takes to produce an anime, it's like figuring out what movies your parents went to before they boned. Come 1997, you start to see them pop out. Berserk, Revolutionary Girl Utena, Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, Serial Experiments Lane, and many, many more great anime got their wings with Ava, which showed the anime industry that risky, weird productions can return their investment and reach massive audiences with the right ingredients. In that respect, the comparison to Star Wars is right on the money. The influence of Ava is not just limited to the business side either, although it is a bit of a mixed legacy. For example, clones of Ayanami Rei seem to crop up in dozens of anime, which should seem horrifyingly ironic to anyone who actually watched Neon Genesis Evangelion. This phenomenon even has its own TV tropes page, and it is doubly weird because you can charitably describe Rei as she appears in the series as an intentionally off-putting character whose occasional extremely endearing moments are offset by a whole lot of eldritch inhumanity. This ties back to what I was talking about earlier. Gainax was not subverting anything from the broader culture in writing this. They were just trying to write the most interesting character. They created the thing that they subverted. What's more, the imitations of Ava are often pretty shallow, much like this video is to RCR. This shows most clearly with the legacy of Asuka, who is considered the godmother of the Sundere archetype, even though when viewed on the whole, her motivations, her actions, and their consequences are totally unlike most of the characters she supposedly inspired. Because there is a sense of character realism at play here that most of the imitators unfortunately lack. If your insecurities make you constantly abrasive and demanding towards the person you like, that isn't going to make them like you back. So, should you watch Neon Genesis Evangelion 1995? Yes, you should try it, though I'm going to try to control your expectations. You should expect unparalleled direction, great music, and to come to like, if not love, at least one of the main characters. If you don't come in expecting a brilliant mystery plot or the answer to life, the universe, and everything, Maybe there will be space for you to be pleasantly surprised as opposed to disappointed. But if nothing about Ava grabs you, just put it down and watch something else. Come back it, to it later with fresh eyes if need be. Life's too short to watch stuff you don't like. And you won't be taking away from what Ava has given to us in the world. Love.